Hello and welcome back fellow feathered friends to a new video in this playlist. Today we will show you what a profiler is and how you can get the most out of Godot's profiler. But first we have to take a moment to thank you all. In the last few days we have reached 1000 subscribers. It is so incredible to see how our parrot family grows and grows. There will also be some changes around the channel, but we will discuss those news in another video. So stay tuned. Furthermore, a huge thank you to our patrons. Even though we don't have that much content for now, you guys support our project. That's just so motivating and truly means a lot to us. So now let's get back to our topic. For those who are new in game development or just don't use this feature in engine, here is a little summary of what a profiler is and what it can do. In the core, a profiler is a tool within modern game engines. It is used to track data and statistics while your game is running. You can imagine that a profiler is an essential tool when it comes to debugging and optimizing your games. The difference between profilers in different engines are their complexity and usability. For example, the Unity engine has the ugliest but also one of the most powerful profilers for game development. So once you're dealt with the UI, you also have the possibility to debug shaders frame by frame with the frame debugger. On the other hand, in Godot, you have a simple UI, all basic tools to fix performance holes, but I can imagine that some more complex games are still hard to debug. So. Now we talked enough about the theory stuff and we can jump right away into the Godot engine. Here in our top-down shooter project, we already prepared the most common use cases for the profiler. You can find the profiler down here in the debugger tab. Godot's debugging tools are spread into multiple tabs. You got the debugger tab for the breakpoints, the error tab for all messages, then you got the profiler, which we will take a closer look at in a minute. The network profiler to track in and outcoming RPCs. Then the monitor to track all stats like FPS, used memory and draw calls. In the next tab you got the video RAM, with which you can easily detect way too big textures. And last but not least, you also got the possibility to export your stats as CSV files. So now back to the profiler. The special thing about the Godot profiler is that you can start it before you even start the scene, which is very useful to debug loading or startup times of the game. Now let's start the scene. And now you can already see the profiling is alright. So if you see this message, you can be sure everything is tracked from the first frame on. So let's take a closer look at the profiler itself. Here you should already see some tracked function calls. You can also change the measure we comment to make the representation dependent on the frame time. Now your frame time is 100% of the frame and beneath here in the script functions you can see which function claims what amount out of the 100% frame time. And in this time beam you can see we got some lag spikes and now we want to debug them. For this you pause the profiler for now and also the scene. If you click on a lag spike or just near a lag spike and then you can perfectly target it by using the frame number, then you will see in your function calls which function causes the most workload. In our case the script functions take a significant amount of time. So we got the situation in which the process function, flip vertical function and the simulate workload function nearly take the same amount of time. But in the most cases the developer just wants to know where the bug is located. For an easier representation we can set the time from inclusive to self. By doing so you will be able to detect way faster where the lag spike is caused. And in this case it is caused by the simulated workload function. So what needs to be clear here? The simulated workload function causes the lag spike and the process function only calls and waits for the simulated workload function to finish, which is why it takes that much time. Now to fix this bug we can hover over the function to see in which script it is located. Or we search for the functions in our files. 
For this we simply select our folder and search for it. And here in the flip vertical function we have our bug or inefficient code. So we can fix it. And now if we restart the game and look at our profiler, you will see it now runs a little bit smoother and it now also runs in 60 FPS. So now for the second bug. This is a small shooting lag. To fix it you have to track a lag spike with this issue and pause the profiler. Now you can jump to the frame and take a closer look at the script functions. Here we got a problem in the physics process, just like the bug before. So you hover over the function to locate the bug. Jump into the script and fix it. And restart our game. Again you start the profiler to see if the bug is gone. At first glance everything looks quite normal. But if you take a closer look at the timeline, you will notice another performance hole in the shooting. So pause again, jump into the lag spike. But now we can't directly see any time consuming functions. Just a physics frame which takes nearly 5 times more time than our normal frame time. So what do we do now? It is pretty suspicious that one lag spike exists from 5 to 7 frames. So with the frame number? We go to the beginning of the spike and maybe we are able to see the Big Bang, since we got back in time. <laughs> so funny. And when we jump through the frames, we find something interesting. In the first frame the profiler track the script functions take a burp load of time. And now we already see the simulate workload function again. This time the bug is located in the pistol gd script and is called in the input event. That's why it is a lot harder to find this kind of bug. You should always have in mind that it makes a difference from where a function is called. Like, the first example was called from the process function, the second from the physics process function, and the last example was called as an event from the input function. So, that's how to debug with the profiler in Godot. Now we want to show you two little tricks to get everything out of your game. A really good alternative to debug print are breakpoints. For example, in this flip vertical function we could write print flip to get the value of flip. Or we just create a breakpoint here. And if we run our game, we can see our print displays true. But our breakpoint in the debugger section makes it possible to see all locals and members from our debug project. And here we also see that flip is true. If you want to track multiple objects, you can simply skip breakpoints or continue to the next ones. That's a little trick for faster debugging and to also keep your code clean from prints. And the last thing for today on which we take a look at is the video RAM debugger. If you start the game, you can see in the video RAM debugger which resource claims how much space on your GPU. And here you can see the total RAM usage of your game. And down here, all of your loaded textures. For example, here we have a grass 4K PNG, which isn't really a 4K texture. But it consumes 40 times more space than the average. To optimize it, it is necessary to compromise or minimize the RAM usage of such big textures. In our case, we just have to delete the 4K grass PNG and use the normal grass PNG, which is only 16 by 16 instead of 320 by 320. So that's already everything you should know to optimize your game by using the Godot profiler. So today you learned the essential parts of the Godot debugging and fixed some performance holes by using the profiler. We hope we could help you a little bit with this video and if you don't want to miss our upcoming 1000 subscriber special and other tips and tricks for Godot, feel free to subscribe. As always, leave your questions, suggestions and comments below and we hope we see us in the next video. Bye!